Okay, so I want to um, also go through some examples of, of painting the square. And, um, again, something that is going to actually be really useful, not just this class, but as you move on um, uh, throughout the rest of your um, experience going into calculus, it's something that is, it's a, I think, just so, so useful um, in helping us analyze, but obviously, especially this year. Um, and so that's why I want to just re re remind you and, and revisit this. Um, and so... Uh, you know, completing the square, I think we even did one in the last example, um, you know, kind of isolate or sort of like temporarily ignore that constant term. So you're going to think of it as like y equals x squared minus 10x, and then leave some space and leave the plus 27 there. Okay, now, our goal is to, you know, complete the square here in, in, in terms of picking a value that, um, that we could add, so that when this, this much of it is factored, it's a perfect square. And you want the same number, so that's you know, the whole idea of the square. And remember that number doubled is always sitting here. So an easy way to do that is divide that by two and then square it. And because you're squaring, this is, you know, this is always gonna be a positive value. Regardless of the sign here, this is always positive. And so then, um, so I've added 25. So I'm going to immediately subtract 25. And that means my net change is zero. And I can add zero, like, right? I'm, I'm adding, you know, I'm adding zero to this. And that makes that, um, you know, that makes it not changing the problem. Okay. So now um, I'm going to go back here. And so, so I'm going to factor this as, as y equals, and that's x minus 5 squared and then 27 minus 5 is 2 so then there's my um, vertex form and if I had to pick out the vertex um, I know that it is 5 comma 2 which is which is nice okay now um, the next uh, equation is x equals and, and it's okay don't panic you still fact complete the square um, by the same process uh, isolating your constant term so it's just x equals so then it's y squared plus 4y, leave a little space, and then the minus 3 we're going to push here. And so again, we think, okay, what could I add here to um, uh, make that a perfect square? So again, half of that number is 2. 2 squared is 4. So then we immediately subtract the 4 there. So we factor the first uh, three components. So x equals quantity y plus 2 squared, and then negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Now, be very careful if I ask you what's the vertex, because even though it's x equals, um, the x and the y uh, still are the same um, positions in terms of naming a point. So the vertex is actually negative 7 comma negative 2, because this negative 2 is a y component that makes that value equal to zero. And then the negative seven, which is here, is an x component, so we put that there. So it's still x comma y, it's just that it appears differently in the actual equation because it's a parabola that's not, that's not a function. Okay, now the next example, um, we need to um, deal with that coefficient of a three in front. And so when I, um, isolate this 31, that's fine. But I'm going to factor the 3 out because we know that 3 means my parabola is opening 3 times skinnier, right? 3 times faster and is a rate of increase. Um, but in terms of vertex form, it would have been factored out. So I need to factor that 3 out. Um, and this plus 31 we can isolate over here is fine. But because we took out a 3 out of the x squared term, and we're also going to be taking a 3 out of 18x, so that's plus 6x. So that's, you know, again, check your math, like that's 3x squared plus 18x. Um, so I did that correctly. So it's just here, just in the parentheses, that we need to complete the square. And again, we've seen the pattern, half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is equal to 9. So I'm going to add a plus 9 here. Now, we might just initially or, or kind of blindly without thinking say, oh, then we subtract 9. Okay, but that's wrong, right? We're not going to do that because that's not technically balanced. It's deceiving, right? This is not a 9. This is actually a 27, right? It's a 3 times 9. It's a 27 in disguise. 
So um, what I need to do is erase this minus nine because that's not adding it to a net change of zero. We actually need to subtract 27. So this, this nine is in disguise as a 27 because it's modified by the three. There's the minus 27, that's a net change of zero. So then I can go ahead and say, okay, so that's y equals three x plus three squared, and then 31 minus 27 is four. So my vertex is negative three comma four. And again, this coefficient of three just means that the rate of increase is three times greater, making our parabola three times skinnier. And I know skinnier is not really a mathematical term. Maybe uh, we could talk about it being vertically stretched, horizontally compressed. Okay, um, you know, you could do exercise D if you want on your own and pause and see uh, how you did or follow along. Um, F of X equals, so remember that's just like Y equals negative. So I know that's opening down. Um, but again, there's a coefficient in front, so I'll call it y equals. So we factor out the negative one half out of the x squared term. We'll also factor it out of the x term. We push the seven out. We don't have to worry about factoring that out. Now be careful. When you divide by this negative one half, you're technically multiplying by its reciprocal. So what actually goes here is a plus 12x. And the checking is, I think, so much easier because you check, oh, negative half of 12. Oh, yeah, that's negative six, and that's what we'd started with. Okay. So then we do half of that value, half of 12 is 6, and 6 squared is 36. But remember, it's not a real 36 we're adding. This 36 is in disguise because the 36 is also under the influence of that negative 1 half. So that actually is a negative 18, right? You've just added a fancy negative 18 here. So now we have to um, counterbalance that with a positive 18 like that. So this 18... And the negative 18 cancels, so it's a value of zero. And that's what we want, a net change of zero. And then we group this, negative one half, and that's x plus six squared, and then seven plus 18 is plus 25. So now our vertex, had we needed to label it, is negative six comma 25. And again, this coefficient in front of negative one half tells me my uh, parabola is opening down, and, the, and it's, um, in increasing at a rate half of what the normal increase is, making it a wider parabola or um, vertically compressed, horizontally stretched. Okay. Um, and then, oh yeah, so, oh, excellent. So we have another example here. Uh, this is a piecewise function. Um, and it, it's a piecewise function because um, depending on which axis you choose, like in the domain, um, you will have a different piece of the graph, right? A different image. So um, so the transition point, it looks like, is negative 1. And so, um, and notice negative 1, although defined in both definitions, it truly belongs to the bottom function. And that means that at that transition point, that will have a solid dot at the transition, indicating that negative one belongs to that part of the graph, that piece of the graph. This will have an open one, meaning that negative one does not belong to that, but everything up to that point would. Okay, so now um, these are both in vertex form. So one strategy could be to think about, okay, well, where is the vertex of each? Um, and, you know, does that fall within the restricted domain of the definition? So like, for example, the, the vertex here of this first one, and maybe we'll go this brighter blue, so for this first one here, the vertex is one comma two. So that clearly, when x is one, yeah, that's greater than negative one. Um, so one comma two would be the vertex of this particular parabola. It is a negative, so it's opening down. And its increase is, is a one. So when I go over one, one squared is one. So I know it's gonna go here and here. And then when I go over two, one, two, it's going to go down four. So, uh, or I could think about putting in negative one. Negative one minus one is negative two squared is four. We said so, but then negative four plus two. So it's a negative two value. So one, two. But that's, that is going to be an open dot because that value is negative one. And when X is negative one, it technically doesn't belong here to this part of the function. So that's negative one comma, we said negative two but there's the rest of the parabola. So I'm gonna fill that in. And then, you know, so it goes on forever in that direction. 
So the blue represents, hey, if X were greater than negative one, this is the shape. And, you know, you could, I mean, if you wanted to highlight this too, you could. So basically, all of the X's that are here on this side, right, this side of the graph, that's where like X equals ne negative one and greater, all the X's on this side have to behave following that function, which we just graphed. Now, if your X's are less than negative one, so like now you're on this green side, oops, I thought I'd click that. Uh, this green side, there it is, like, right? So if you're on this side of the divide of, of negative one, which was picked, that means you're gonna follow this function. Um, and notice its vertex is at uh, negative three, negative six. So um, go back to my pen and I'll go to maybe red. Um, which I like that to kind of contrast it. So at negative one, it's going to go down. Oh, sorry, uh, at negative three, it's at negative six. So one, two, oops, pen. I'll do that. My bad. Um, pen, red color. There we go. Uh, one, two, three, and then negative six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's the vertex. It is opening up, and so then again, thinking about um, you know going like going one to the right, up one squared, one squared is one, two would be up four over two up four over two up four, or thinking about putting in negative one the transition point negative one plus three is um, two two squared is four, and then four minus six is negative two. So it's kind of interesting that a negative one, two for the red function is actually a filled in dot, but negative one, two was an open dot on the blue function. Um, and the, 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 the thing I want you to realize is that not every piecewise function is going to line up so cleanly, right? So, cause we had this piece, so we can pull it. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, we had this piece and just lined up perfectly with this piece right here. Um, it may not always do that. This transition point might have a jump in it. And actually, it's kind of interesting because the other class I teach is calculus, and that's exactly what we're studying, is th if there are jumps or discontinuities in graphs that do not make them um, continuous. So, okay. So, but that's something to look forward to um, for next year, right? But again, just some reminders of completing the square. Um, an absolute necessity. You absolutely need to know how to complete the square. Um, and as we start solving quadratics, completing the square, I think, is even more useful than the quadratic formula. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions or if I made any mistakes.